the engine control module is responsible for many things, but it can't do anything if the information it gets is inaccurate. And on vehicles that use a mass airflow sensor as the primary load sensor, it happens more often than you might think. Do you want to know how to check the mass sensor to make sure it's telling the ECM the truth? Well, that's next on today's Service Done Right. Today's Service Done Right is brought to you by Delphi. Be sure to visit them at www.delphiaftermarket.com. The mass airflow sensor, or MAF sensor, is the primary sensor input to the ECM, letting the ECM know just how much air is entering the engine. If the sensor's information is inaccurate, then the fueling decisions made by the ECM will also be inaccurate. And this is going to result in drivability problems and often will set fuel trim related DTCs, typically P0171 and P0174 system lean. There are a number of diagnostic trouble codes related to the performance and ECM testing of the mass airflow sensor. These two may be set when a problem occurs with the sensor's ability to accurately do its job. And common among them is the P0101, or Mass Airflow Range Performance DTC. When diagnosing any DTC, a few first steps are in order. First, make sure there are no related factory TSBs or technical service bulletins related to the code or symptom. Second, do your homework and read up on the code's definition and criteria. Ask yourself, what is the ECM looking for when determining there's a problem? Keep in mind too that in the case of the MAF sensor, turbulence in the sensor bore can affect its ability to read the air flowing through it correctly. Turbulence can be caused by problems in sealing of the air box and air filter, the use of an aftermarket cold air intake system, leaking intake valves allowing blowback through the intake manifold, clogged exhausts, and others. A properly working mass airflow sensor will typically read one gram per second of airflow for every liter of engine displacement on an engine that's reached normal operating temperature and running at idle. So going to your scan tool and looking at that data is a good place to start. My next step is to take the vehicle out for a test drive and perform a volumetric efficiency test or VE test. Volumetric efficiency is a measure of just how well the engine can breathe, and the mass airflow sensor is the primary source of information in order to complete that test. It's also the primary source for calculating absolute and calculated load that you see in the data stream. And just to be sure that you don't accidentally include any OE substituted values in your data records, be sure to do this test using the generic or global OBD2 mode of your scan tool. Begin by selecting the following data PIDs. MAF in grams per second or pounds per minute. RPM. IAT or intake air temperature as the air temperature affects density. Barometric pressure or check online for the current atmospheric pressure in your area. I also like to graph the short-term and long-term fuel trims to help me interpret the results. With the scan tool ready to go, let's take the vehicle out to a safe test area and perform the test. To perform the test, select the record function on the scan tool and begin driving. From a rolling start in first gear, accelerate at wide open throttle until the vehicle shifts into second. Pull off to a safe place and stop the scan tool recording and return to the shop. Once you return to the shop, you're going to need to take the data that you collected and put the values into a VE calculator. Now you can Google VE calculator, you'll find a number of them available online, but if for some reason you can't locate one, I do have one in an Excel spreadsheet format that I'll be glad to send you. Just leave a comment and we'll connect online and I'll get that out to you.
So let's enter the data that we collected on this test drive, hit calculate, and find out what the test results are. Test results on a non-turbo or supercharged engine of 90% or more generally indicates an engine that's not having any trouble breathing. In fact, on some of the later model highly efficient engine designs, seeing values in excess of 100% is not unheard of. Now, if the vehicles that you're testing does have a turbo or supercharger, you're going to have to consider the impact boost has on those test results. It can raise the value substantially. Now, the test route value of a non-turbo or supercharged engine is between 75 and 90 percent. It's kind of a gray area. You're going to have to consider the engine design, vehicle age, other symptoms that you've experienced during your testing, and make your, your diagnostic decisions based on all of the information together. And finally, if it's below 75%, that's a good indication that the engine is struggling to get the air in and out of itself. Now, it could be a breathing issue, or it could be a problem with the mass sensor reading inaccurately. How do you tell? We take a look at fuel trims. If the MAF sensor is indeed reporting correctly, then the fuel calculations made by the ECM will also be correct. And you'll see very little change in terms of fuel trim. So if I have a failed VE test and fuel trims that are normal, then I'm even more convinced that there's actually a breathing problem in the engine itself. Now conversely, if the MAF sensor is reporting incorrectly, well, the calculations made by the ECM will also be incorrect typically adding too little fuel for the amount of air that actually entered the engine. Now, of course, the oxygen sensor is going to see that and it's going to tell the ECM that it needs to make a correction for that lean condition. And you'll see that in the fuel trims as they start to go rich. And you'll notice that this occurs all the way from low load, low RPM through higher load and higher RPM across the entire operating range. If you see this combination, Correcting rich across the entire range and a failed VE test, well, that finger is pointing directly at the MAF sensor. Now, before you pull the trigger and order that MAF sensor, there is one more thing I want you to check, and that's to make sure that the circuit integrity between the MAF sensor and the ECM is intact. Good power, good ground, and no sources of voltage drop. If these checks are okay, you can be confident that the repair you're about to make is going to be a service done right. And to make that service even better, choose Delphi as your source for replacement sensor. After all, Delphi has been a leading supplier to the OEs for over two decades and now have coverage for over 204 million vehicles in North America. Trust in the parts that are tested to the same OE standards and using the same OE validation equipment. Trust Delphi. And as always, thanks for watching.